Hannity starts right now. And welcome to the New World Order. Now, that was the message from British Prime Minister Gordon Brown today, and that is our headline this Thursday night, day number 73 of false hope, loose change all around the globe. Now, President Obama met with world leaders today in London at the G whiz. Hey, how can we build the taxpayers just a little more G20 summit? Now, Mr. Obama said the meeting is a, quote, turning point as world leaders agreed on a framework for unprecedented steps to so-called restore economic growth. But here at home? Well, people are not so convinced. In a brand new Fox News poll released today, 66 percent of Americans polled believe that the worst is still yet to come in the economic crisis, while only 27 percent think that the worst is behind us. Maybe that's because TurboTax chief Tim Geithner can only claim, get this, a very low approval rating of just 37 percent. Ouch. I bet he wishes that he uh, ponied up that extra money in payroll taxes. Joining us tonight from London with more is Daniel Hannon. He is a member of the European uh, Parliament. Uh, Daniel, good to see you. You have you've become quite a celebrity here in the U.S., especially among conservatives. I hope you're aware of your new status. It's a huge honor to be on your show for any conservative, or indeed for anyone, Sean. Uh, well, welcome back. Look, first of all, I, I guess I'm going to start with the anarchists and, and the people that are protesting. The British papers seemed a little bit defensive, you know, and more, more or less addressing President Obama saying, whoa, whoa, this is not all of us. Why were they so defensive? I found that somewhat curious as if he wouldn't know. I suppose people wanted to make a good impression on him. I mean, and, and to be fair, he is he's pretty popular abroad. You know, his, his wife came to visit a girls' school in London and she spoke very movingly. I mean, I know he, he wasn't your choice of president. Gordon Brown wasn't my choice of prime minister. But I think that people recognize that it's a good thing when the British and American leaders are working together and um, people in this country regard you as their closest allies. And so that, I guess that was why they, they, uh, well, they didn't want to let the, the side down. Well, we certainly do share values and uh, Great Britain has always been our closest ally. And uh, that the values in this world, especially in a world of terrorism, I think are ideal. Perhaps there's too much fixation on gifts and what Michelle Obama is, is wearing and meeting the queen. Uh, a little alien to me in as much as, you know, people are suffering. I'm not really concerned about what gifts wealthy people are giving each other, nor am I concerned what the first lady is wearing. Uh, are we spending too much time and attention uh, and, fo and putting too much focus on that? Well, except in so far as it was seen to be uh, a snub when Obama was kind of slapping Brown around. And, you know, I mean, believe me, Brown is not popular in this country. We, we all know that he's a ninny, but people kind of felt bad that he was being slapped <laughs> around by Obama when we would rather that we slap him around. You know, that's, oh, okay. that's, no, that, our, that's, that's our national pastime. Well, if, uh, the perception from here for me and for other conservatives is that basically Barack Obama rolled over. Barack Obama well, capitulated. I mean, first of all, it's very clear that he and Brown are buddy-buddy now. I mean, all of that business from last month is over, you know. Uh, he couldn't have been more effusive. He used the word special relationship without the ghost of a smirk around his lips. Uh, and then there was that great thing about, uh, we all owe Prime Minister Brown a great debt of gratitude. Uh, at first, I misheard. I thought he was saying we all owe Gordon Brown a great debt, which would have been much more, <laughs> more accurate. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, and, and why? Well, because those two were for the stimulus package. And on the other side, uh, Sarkozy and Merkel and all the others were for more regulation. And kind of what I was afraid of seems to be what's happened at this summit, which is we got a little bit of both bad ideas. So we've got more regulation, okay, not as much as Sarkozy yeah. wanted, but we've got under the guise of cracking down on tax havens, we've got all these steps towards creating a sort of a, a global financial oversight mechanism. And at the same time, we've got a trillion dollar stimulus package. Now, you yeah. know, to adapt uh, your famous senator, a trillion here, a trillion there, and pretty soon you're talking real money. Yeah, pretty soon you are. Well, you mentioned Sarkozy and Merkel, and, and I would agree they came in with a pretty harsh stance, seemed to get what they want. But it seems like the, the love affair with Barack Obama in Europe seems to be waning um, and may even be over. I mean, you know, to have the, the European Union president saying the, the Obama plan is leading the United States to hell, uh, that was not the kind of criticism we were getting during the campaign. I mean, it was always going to be the case that eventually the European obsession with Obama was going to wear off. And the reason for that is that there are fundamental disagreements between the US and the EU on a whole series of issues, which Obama, like any US president, is, is not going to be able to 
to drop his position on. And so when they kind of, when all of the real uh, anti-Americans on the left bank in Paris and in the, the, the left-wing parts of, uh, of Berlin and so on, when they kind of remember that they still really don't like you guys because of Kyoto and because of Iraq and because of Iran and because of Cuba, you know, the, the political complexion or indeed the actual complexion of uh, Barack Obama is not going to be a defense against their anti-Americanism anymore. You know, you, when you were last on the program, you put so much emphasis. You looked in the camera and you said, if you only remember one thing from this interview, please remember, do not follow us down the road of socialism. Do not nationalize your health care. And we got more mail, more responses, uh, more people, I think, getting it. You know, for many, many years, for example, I have, I have focused on the, uh, the papers in Great Britain and in Canada and in France talking about the the inefficiency and the lack of quality care that exists under that system. Can you explain in, with some specificity why you are giving such a dire warning to the people of the United States? Because you're our friends and if you see a friend about to make a terrible mistake, you try and warn him. And we've lived through this mistake. We've lived through this mistake for 60 years now. 